So once we've sorted that out, we've made a decision on taking a vessel, the trader says, yes, I like that one. And ultimately it's the trader who has the decision on, on which vessel to take, assuming that the vessels are acceptable. They have to be vetted. They have to meet the quality standards of the company. Uh, but if they do, then it's the trader who makes the decision to which vessels he wants to take. It's his economics. Typically the shipping department is a service to the traders. They don't have a stake in the deal necessarily. If the deal loses money, it doesn't come out of the, the shipping department's book. If the trader makes money, it doesn't go into the shipping department's book. So ultimately, if it's an economic decision, it's down to the trader. So the trader will say to the shipping department, I like this ship, go get me a deal for this ship. So the shipping department goes back to the person who's offering them in the ship, whether it's a broker or directly with a ship owner, and negotiates a contract with them. And we, in oil trading, we call it, when we buy and sell the oil, we call it the commercial contract. We buy and sell the oil. Now we have a separate contract to hire the vessel, and we call that a charter party. Uh, I don't know if Jeffrey knows. I assume he does where the term charter party comes from. It's actually from the French um, uh, chart or charter is a contract, and party is not the counterparty. It's actually, this is, you know, I can't verify this. I looked it up on, on Google and this is what Wikipedia told me. So we have to rely on them, but it's a contract that's been written and then made into two, you know, they care that they write the contract twice on a piece of paper and tear it in half and each person gets a copy. So it's a contract in two or three parts. Actually, the French borrowed it from Latin. It's a carta partita, carta being the Latin word for document, which has been okay. torn in half, carta partita. There you go. I had almost all the story, but leaving, leave it to the shipping expert expert to actually go all the way back to the Latin. I'm going to have to top you and have to find some Phoenicians or something who had something like that and see if the, the Romans didn't steal it from a Phoenician. Okay. So we have this contract to hire a vessel, the charter party, the charte partie, cartita, uh, carta partita. Okay. All right. There are different ways to hire a vessel. Jeffrey is going to get into this um, in much more detail and legalese. So I'm going to do this from the point of view of a trader who doesn't necessarily care that much about the nitty gritty of the contract. He just wants to make sure he has a vessel that will perform uh, as it says on the tin, as they say in England. So we have different ways to hire. And I'll use an analogy I like to use, which is cars, because most people have not been on a, an oil tanker or hired one, but most people have been in a car or hired a car in one way or another. So we have the first kind of charter party, which is a call a spot charter party. A spot charter party is hiring a vessel for one voyage. So this is the equivalent of hiring a taxi. You call a taxi or you stick up your hand, you wave down a taxi or hail a cab or you whistle for it, however you do it. Or I guess you're, if you're in Singapore, you do this, or in Asia, you do that. It's very confusing. Um, you get in. Where do you want to go? Take me to the airport. The guy drives you to the airport, discharges your luggage and you, you pay him, and off he goes, and you never have to see him again. And that is a, um, a single voyage or a spot voyage. Uh, the other alternative is to hire a vessel for a period of time, which is like hiring a car with a driver. We call this a time charter. Time because you're hiring it for a period of time. So like the car, you hire a car and driver, you pay $100 a day for that car and driver, and that includes the driver, the car, the insurance, the maintenance, all of those things. But it doesn't include gasoline, Highway tolls, parking fees, um, typically things like that. So when you hire a time charter vessel, you pay for the vessel on a daily basis, the same way you'd hire a car on a lease with a driver on a daily basis. And you would hire it for a period of time, six months, a year, three years, um, whatever you want to agree on. Typically, it would be something more than a month, simply because even the, the shortest load journey discharge would probably take you seven to 10 days. Uh, it could be shorter, but it doesn't make all that much sense to hire a vessel for just one month, but it's not impossible. And I, I've done it for one month in my career, but it's uh, more the exception than, than the rule. So typically something like six months, a year, two, three years would be more typical for hiring the vessel. 
So when you do that, you get the ship, you get the crew, you get the management of the vessel, the expertise of the owner, the maintenance, the insurance, they're responsible for everything. But you have to pay them a daily rate, and the daily rate depends on what the market is, and uh, can depend also on the size and the quality of the vessel. And you also have to pay for all the extras. You have to pay for fuel. You have to pay for port costs. Those are really the main things. Occasionally, if you're doing <clears throat> certain kinds of operations, like ship-to-ship -ship operations, you'll have to hire um, fenders and maybe a superintendent or possibly pay for tugs in certain places if, if it's required exceptionally. But the biggest costs that you're dealing with are hiring the ship itself, which includes the crew, and paying the bunkers and the port costs. Uh, the ship itself, the cost for that is very variable. There have been periods of time where you could hire a 250,000 ton ship for, I don't know, $10,000 a day. Up to, and then that has gone up as high as, I don't know if anyone's actually done time charters at that rate, but well in excess of 100,000. Uh, Jeffrey, time charter over 200? Actual time, okay, so actual time charter. I wasn't sure. I know that the time charter equivalent certainly gone over 300. So people have actually hired VLCCs, 250, 275,000 ton ships for over $200,000 a day. When you're hiring a ship for $10,000 a day you, and you hire it for a year, if you leave it sitting there for a month, that works out to $300,000 because you have to pay for the vessel the entire time you have it whether or not you're using it. Now, if you hired a ship for $200,000 a day, that is a significantly different amount of money that you lose if the ship is sitting there. If it sits idle for a month, that's $2 million. So it's, it's quite a difference. In the spot charter, you load your cargo, you discharge your cargo somewhere, and once all the cargo is off the ship, you pay the ship owner and you're done. For a time charter, if you hire it for a year, you load a cargo, you discharge a cargo, you sit for two weeks, you still have to pay for that ship for the entire year. Okay, so that's the difference between a spot charter and a time charter or a long-term charter for a ship. Uh, there are other ways to hire. We'll see if I talk about that. Uh, certainly Jeffrey's gonna talk about that, so I'm not sure if I'm going to.